How's it going, my friends? Hope everybody's doing great out there. Now today, we're gonna do something a little bit different, and instead of you guys watching me work, I'm gonna check out some of your work. Now, just in case you didn't catch my last post, I started a Discord, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically just a big old group chat. I really just wanted a place for us all to hang out and talk and just help each other become better designers. And I've even got some weekly challenges on there that I'll be updating every single week. And if you participate in those, you might get your work featured on the channel in an upcoming video. I mention all that because the portfolios that we're gonna be looking at today all came from submissions from the Discord. So if you want a shot at your portfolio being on the next portfolio review video, then join my Discord with the link in the description. So let's get started with our first one from Nada. And it says she is a positive graphic design student. I guess that's better than being a negative one. And speaking of that, one thing I do think it is important for you to have in your portfolio is a really well-rounded description. You know, if a client comes on here to look at this, you want them to be able to instantly tell what type of designer you are. So if I was a client and I was just rummaging through the internet and I happened upon this page, my first thought would be that Nadia is some type of photographer, not necessarily a designer. Because if you can look from these top pieces, it's like this piece is nothing but a photograph. There's another photograph. And we also do have some pieces that show some logos and maybe some branding or things like that, but it just makes it a little more confusing. If you wanna do photography, then by all means, fill your portfolio with photographs, but then call yourself a photographer. If you wanna do graphic design, then you need to fill your portfolio with graphic designs. And most clients don't even really care if you went to design school or not. They really just care about what results that you can provide. So even if you are still in school, if you wanna start getting some clients, don't sell yourself as a student. Sell yourself as a designer, because that's what you are. So checking out this first project here, we can see that it is, in fact, just a bunch of photographs. Now the quality of these photographs don't really matter. Like, these are pretty nice photos. But when you're calling yourself a graphic designer, these aren't super helpful to a client that wants to hire you for graphic design. Checking out this piece here from the Solar Boat Museum. So I like here that we have a description of the museum. It gives you some information about the project, which is really key to having these things. So it says here that only about 25% of people that visit Cairo in Egypt tend to visit the Solar Boat Museum. So I assume the purpose of this project is that we want more people to come to the museum. And this brings up another important point. When you're making these kind of project layouts, you as the designer know exactly what you designed and exactly what elements are here just for presentation. Somebody looking at this for the first time that isn't familiar with the project doesn't really know that. So in this instance, I'm just assuming that she made these icons, but it's not perfectly clear that she did. So it'd be nice to have some type of description for what these are and how she made them, maybe the inspiration behind them. Just a little bit more detail to help us know what's going on. All right, so here we have some of that inspiration I was talking about. We've got some good visual elements it looks like that she's pulled from. And then we've got some actual photographs with those icons used inside of them. So we can get some real world use cases. And I think that's a great idea. From there, it looks like we've got a few more photos and maybe just some larger versions of those photos. So the photos are nice because it really helps bring the project to life. But I think the layout of this presentation is a bit strange because we start off with some of the final work up here. Then we move into an inspiration phase and then back to the final work and then to some use cases and then to like an overview of everything we've already seen and then down into more of a detailed version of the overview. It's kind of just hard to follow. So what I would actually recommend is showing one of these use cases as your title image to show people really what this project is, to get them interested in it, and then move down into the actual work that you did and then follow that with the process showing the inspiration and any other stages that you wanted to show in between there. I think the main thing here is that you can tell a lot of this is from a student. You know, most of this looks like projects that you've been assigned in class. That's why there's so many different types of projects. So what I would recommend is if you really want to pursue graphic design in particular, then you need to trim down your portfolio to just include those pieces that show your design skills in the best possible way. Alrighty, let's move on to Daniel's portfolio. And right off the bat, this looks really nice. I like the different colors we've got going on here. You've got this nice big orange piece that really kind of makes me want to click on it and see what it is. You've got a good balance of colors overall. And another thing real quick while we're here is that it looks like Daniel has some custom branding. He's got a logo up here and that's a great idea just to help set yourself apart. On Daniel's logo, I would say though that it's a little bit hard to read. I think instead of having these empty spaces in the letters, connecting those with lines that are still pretty thin would give you roughly the same look and make it a lot more legible. Something just to think about. Another thing I'll say is I think this is a pretty good size for a portfolio. We've got about seven pieces here, and that's a pretty good amount of work. You don't want to necessarily overwhelm your viewer with so much content that they don't know really what to click on or what to look at first, but you also don't want to show just like two pieces. You want some breadth, but you also want quality because you know it's better to have five high quality pieces than 20 medium quality ones. 
So let's check out this Rise project first. So Rise Fitness. So this looks like it's branding for a personal trainer and coach. They wanted to reflect their energy, discipline, and heritage with a punchy color palette and industrial styling. When it's something that can be used across multiple channels and products, as a good brand always should be able to do. So what I like here is that we've got this really cool header image. It doesn't just show the logo, it shows the brand as a whole. We've got some graphic elements that clearly match the branding we saw on the thumbnail. And these images help us see the lifestyle and the theme that this brand is going for. It makes us feel a part of the brand rather than just focusing on the graphics. And I think it gives us just enough of a taste of the project to make us interested in it without giving too much away. That way we scroll down and look at the rest of it. And see, I really like this. Instead of just showing the logo in a plain version first, we have an application of it. And I think this is always such a really good idea because when you place your designs in the real world, like in this instance, printing this on some type of sports clothing, it makes your brand feel more real. You know, it's not just digital pixels out there on the screen. This is something that exists in the world that people are using. And it even gives the illusion that somebody thought this was worthy enough to pay for and to produce, whether they did or not, because it looks like it's out in the real world. Moving on, we've got a breakdown here. This is something that's pretty common. You'll see this all the time on Instagram. People will have their logos and then show like the guidelines that made them. I think it's a little overdone at this point. I'm not really sure it makes the design feel that much more valuable. In this instance, I think it's fine because it's visually pleasing, but if you have to rely on a lot of guides to make your logo look good, then maybe you gotta take a closer look at the logo. We got some nice shots of these stickers, and I like these because it doesn't just show the logo, it shows some other brand elements too. Really cool sweatshirt shot. I like that distressed logo in the background. And we finish off with some more clear shots of just the logo straight on. Overall, Daniel, this is an awesome project. I think it really shows the full brand well. It's not just a logo design, it feels more than that. And I think that's something that a lot of projects don't necessarily pull off. So good job. Let's check out this phone project next. UK Property Investment. So it says this is an annual content released from Seven Capital and it's designed for investors looking at property. The guide highlights key locations and upcoming investment hotspots. So it's optimized for viewing on mobile devices. And they wanted to ensure that complex data could be communicated quickly and easily. Once again, we've got a really good description of what the project is. I mean, it's just a couple sentences, so it's not hard to read at all. And just glancing over that, I immediately know what this project is about. And so that just helps me set my expectations for what I'm gonna find as I scroll through this. So here it looks like we have some printouts of the data, which is a little confusing because the description said this was optimized specifically for viewing on mobile devices. On the thumbnail, we saw a bunch of phones with this data on it, but here the first image we see in the project besides the header, it looks like these are actual pages. So that's actually kind of funny because I just said that the description was gonna help us set our expectations and then right off the bat, those expectations are kind of subverted. The layouts and stuff look really nice, but I would have expected to see this on some type of mobile phone. Moving on, it looks like we've still got some paper layouts and then we finally get to the phone. So it looks like this is the same image as the thumbnail, which is fine to do, but I would say that generally it's better to have a more tailored thumbnail. You don't necessarily wanna just pop out an image from the presentation and use that as a thumbnail. Sometimes you can, but usually thumbnails are viewed at a lot smaller of a size and your project is viewed at a lot larger of a size. So most of the time you wanna simplify down those thumbnails to just a few core elements that really sell the entire story of the project and let all the images in the project build upon that. So personally, I would have liked to seen these types of images on mobile mockups up here, rather than having to go all the way to the bottom of the project to find those. And one thing about this image in particular is that these mockups look nice, but we've got two phones here that don't really show any more information. It's just the back of the phone. And when you're using mockups, I like to think that every piece in the mockup needs to help tell the story of the design. You know, people have a very small attention span. They're only gonna look at something for so long. So every element in what they're seeing needs to help build all of the other elements up. I'm assuming the reason you showed the back of the phones is because you didn't have enough pages to fill out this entire section. So I think what you could have done is maybe found a mock-up with fewer phones. That way you could have filled up every phone with a piece of content, or maybe even just use the same mock-up, but make it larger. That way there were less phones actually visible. And then once again, you could have filled up everything with your actual design content. So going back to the homepage for just a second, you can definitely tell where some of these thumbnails are a little more enticing than others. For example, this magazine project looks really cool. It makes me kind of want to click on that to see more. But then these local projects down here don't really give me that same feeling. I feel like the Rise branding up here does a really good job of showcasing the logo as well as kind of a use case. We've got some other elements that help support the rustic, grungy feel of the brand. And down here, we've just kind of got some golden letters. 
which I get that that's probably trying to portray luxury or high quality. But I think both of these thumbnails could probably use some extra props, or maybe instead of just showing the logo, you could show them in a real world use case, like on a business card, or maybe some stationery or something like that. Just something that tells us this is a branding project and not just a logo design. So Daniel, nice job with this portfolio. I think you've got some real winners here. I might just work on those thumbnails again, try to get something that's a little more engaging, uh, but overall, good job, man. So I can already tell that this is professional quality work. You can tell by the layouts and the subject matter especially that Grant does this for a living. Looks like he's worked with some big brands already like the NBA and Gary Vee. And so without even looking at any of these projects, I can already tell that if I'm a client and I want to hire a professional, Grant is going to probably be somebody I want to look at. Looks like we've got a pretty good sized portfolio here. And I think it might be helpful to pick like three of these projects that really give a good overview of your skill set and maybe feature those at the top, you know, make the thumbnails a little bit bigger than all of these others. And if you can just help guide them and let them know, hey, these are the three projects I want you to check out. It'll give you a good overview of my skill set, then that can go a long way. So let's look at this first one here. So this is the New York Mets brand redesign, a new look designed from the ground up. Now, I think one thing to say here is that if you're doing any type of redesign of brands that already exist, especially major brands, you wanna make it clear if this is an official redesign or if this is just kind of like a fan redesign. Because you don't wanna sell yourself as having redesigned the New York Mets unless you actually did. That's just something you wanna be extra clear about. That way a potential client understands exactly what you've done. So look at this project. We've got a really nice header image here. Most people probably know that the New York Mets is a baseball team. And instead of leaving that up to chance, we've got a really nice image of a baseball player here. And so that one image just fills in any gaps that we might have. Now we come to a nice project description. Now I like this because we've got specific words that are highlighted. Even though this is a really short description and it doesn't take much effort to read it, just in case somebody really wants to skim through the project quickly, they can look at just these highlighted words and get a good idea of what this brand is all about. It's loud, bold, energetic. We wanted bright and saturated colors, some grittiness and texture to it. You know, it's, it's basically all there. I didn't even have to read anything else. So that's really smart to do that. Now it looks like we've got some font breakdowns. I think this looks nice here. It's pretty common to see in a lot of design portfolios, people showing which fonts they used for which types of elements. I'm not entirely sure how much clients really care about that. Most clients wouldn't know one font name from the other if you told them. So while it is something that could help fill out the presentation, I'm not sure it's entirely necessary. We've got some more information about the branding and some images. And then we get to the brand assets. So I would say even at this point, it feels like we've had to scroll quite far to get to any type of actual design. Obviously we started out with a nice overview here, but really it's just been descriptions and kind of breakdowns since then. So I would have liked to seen some of these brand assets first, and then we can move into maybe more of these additional sections. Okay, so here we've got the actual graphic work, and these are looking really cool. Grant has a nice way of mixing images with other digital assets in a way that doesn't seem so flat. You know, there's a lot of depth here and texture, and I think with baseball being a pretty down and dirty game as it is, these visuals really match that aesthetic. So we've got all sorts of different use cases here. We've got some quotes, some different promotion graphics. Ooh, we've got some gifts as well. These are really cool. Yeah, man, I mean, see, this work is awesome, and I think you really want to push this up in the hierarchy in the portfolio. Because trust me, if somebody sees this work, they're going to want to continue to scroll on. So if we continue on, we've got some more graphics. I and mean, once again, all of these look really solid. It shows a really good knowledge of using different layouts for things. You know, because sometimes when you're making a bunch of graphics that have roughly the same size or they're going to be used for the same purpose. You know, for example, we're making a big set of images for Instagram ads. It can sometimes be hard to make those feel unique from each other. And I think we've got a lot of examples here to where we have some similar style graphics, but all of them have such unique layouts that they feel very different. And I think that's a really good sign of a strong designer. And we end on a thanks for watching. And this is one other thing that I've seen a lot online. You'll have the entire project and then you'll end on a thank you screen. And I get why people do this. Most of the time it's because these are Behance projects and people wanna make sure that people appreciate the project or leave a comment or something like that. For a portfolio that you're gonna to show to clients, I would probably get rid of this or at least just get rid of this text and maybe just end on a picture of the logo with the same background. That could be cool. For clients that are viewing this, it's kind of just strange for thanking them for viewing the project, at least in my opinion, but something very small there. I'm gonna check out this project next, Gaming Creative. We got brand design, concept, primary and secondary marks created for a female gaming group. So unlike the last project we looked at, this one definitely doesn't necessarily draw me in as much. We've got some cool logos, I think but we don't necessarily have that really gripping visual right at the top that makes us want to explore the project more. Scrolling down here though, 
we can see a few more of the logos, maybe some different promotional graphics, and then we have another project. Now see, this is the project that was actually shown on the thumbnail. And that's a little confusing because when I clicked on the thumbnail, I kind of expected to see a project revolving around this, but instead we had these graphics first, and I'm not entirely sure what they have to do with this project down here. Are they related somehow? It doesn't really seem so because we have another project description. And in my opinion, this is a lot stronger work than this up here. So I would probably just recommend scrapping this and just going all in on this. Maybe show this straight up front and then below that give some breakdown of how you made it, the different elements, how it was put together, things like that. Because this is a really cool image. Checking out one more project here, we've got the Social Graphics Collection. So this is a collection of sports artwork and designs created for social media. Really like this text effect here, the black and white, that's really cool. All the distortions. And I like this layout because we start with this black and white, but then we can see a little bit of color peeking out down here. And although these top pieces are cool, that color definitely makes us want to see more and scroll down and leads us through the rest of the project. We just got a lot of interesting artwork, very similar styles I would say, but the elements and colors are different enough to make them unique. I think it would be really cool to see some breakdowns of these images. So maybe like show a bit of a collage like you've got going on here, but then maybe take one and show a process for that. Or maybe Maybe even instead of just showing the images, you could do like a GIF that starts out like a sketch and then it shows you putting in the elements and adding the lighting and the person and all the special effects. Because I think a lot of times it's really hard for clients to tell how much work goes into a design. You see a picture like this for instance and it's like, well, that's an awesome looking picture, but what did they really do to get that result? You know, did somebody just give them this background and this image of a player and they just stuck it on top of each other? Or did they make all of this background themselves? You know, sometimes it can just be hard to tell. And really a portfolio is just a marketing vehicle for your designs. The design is the product, but the portfolio is how you sell that product. It's your chance to build it up and showcase it in the best light possible. Just scrolling through here, we've got a lot more social graphics. I mean, a lot of these are really cool. They've got enough style variation to where they're interesting. You know, it's just not all the same thing, which would get old after a while. Again, I'd get rid of this thank you graphic. But yeah, man, Grant, you are awesome, my dude. Great work. So guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this portfolio review. Remember, if you want your portfolio to be included in the next video, use that link in the description to join my Discord. When you do that, you'll be brought to a welcome page. You can read all the rules, see how to submit your portfolios, how to take part in the weekly challenge. Don't forget that. If you wanna see more of this type of stuff, don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of videos on this channel where I design things from scratch. So if you're interested in that, you can check those out here. And a big thank you to everybody that submitted a portfolio. I really appreciate it. You know, it's not easy to put your work out there and have it critiqued. I'm gonna leave links to all of these guys' portfolios down in the description, so make sure to check them out. And tell them in the comments what you thought of their work. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.